It's our very first show of the year. Happy New Year, everyone! Hey, Welcome New to the show. I am Murayo <laughs> Afo Labi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Elijah, Nima, Akashat, Happy Zibiri, how are you? Happy New Year, Nigeria. That's in our festive ah. mood. In fact, <laughs> reality has come home. Reality, <laughs> pay, work has started. I woke up early this morning. I was late this morning. Uh. I left home. I think I left home seven. It was lucky for me to be here. What? Road was free. Yes, wow. I must have left home seven because I was still struggling with my bags at six thirty. <laughs> first time of the year. But thank God for you know for everything. I'm grateful to God for everything, including the trials. I yeah. always say that mm -hmm. we come to form us and make us stronger. Yeah. I I, I was looking forward to a beautiful year. How was your weekend? Ah no. Hey. YK, thank you for being such an amazing host. Yes, My always. kids love it at YK's house and, you know... 30, right? 31st, right? Yes, yeah. and I always sleep over till the next morning now oh, because nice. it's a long drive. And it's just amazing. Thank fantastic. you so much, Mom. Fantastic, you that's good. Mm -hmm. How are you doing, Tokwe? How was your weekend? My weekend your holidays? church. <laughs> <laughs> My holiday was pretty um, family-focused, um, cooking and taking care of my children because I didn't have any help. Um, but I'm actually really, really looking forward to the new year. Um, I'm launching into agriculture. Um, I've, it's, been in my, it's been in my website for the past two years of being in real estate that I'm doing land and agriculture, but I haven't done agriculture. Mm. So this year, just before we enter the new year, um, we closed deal on 100 acres of land yeah, to plant yam. So mm. the plan is, uh, I've seen a model that works. Yam can grow in Lagos, and it is just as good as yam from anywhere around the country. Oh, and so, yeah. we're, we're, I'm excited yeah. about Fantastic. going yeah. into farming yeah. in the yeah. new year. Yeah. <laughs> we'll still talk about all our plans. Yeah. How are you doing, Mariam? How was I'm your holiday? Fine. Oh, I love your jewelry. Thank you. Thank you. That's a BS craft. Oh, she it yeah. that, that, that beautiful. I'm wearing yeah. BS craft. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. On your wrist, oh just lovely. Beautiful. Thank you Gorgeous. so much, dear Scrap. I need to check them out. I've never been amazing, heard. you know, with your gifts and creativity. It's just lovely. But yeah. I enjoyed my holiday. Wow. This has got to be one of my very best <laughs> holidays yeah. ever. Yeah. I was not under any pressure to dress up and go anywhere. Yeah. Everyone <laughs> came over. <laughs> you know, I have my best friend's kids in my house. Oh, you know, nice. they live in Abuja, but they've been around for Christmas. It's like best friends for my children. I'm just so excited. It's just exactly how As I wanted it. Like, I've yes. always wanted it to be. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. I, had, time. I had my in-laws <laughs> around and we were... I had, we saw like, you on Instagram, Auntie. Auntie. You? <laughs> auntie. <laughs> they had to beg with me, Auntie. Yeah, it's okay. We are not going anywhere. Leave us alone. We are okay. Our daughter said, um, this is not a holiday. I said, why? Because holidays you rest. <laughs> you I said, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> so this is that the whole of last So this weekend we rested and we have a nice community in the estate. So we're having a small house house party today. Oh, like the, the, estate ending, party. the small little a small estate of five, yeah. five, twelve families. Yeah. Having a, a hangout today. That. Uh, and then this week, I have a party on Friday. Still? I mean, I said, well, it hasn't really ended. But you I'll cannot go help yourself. But I can't help myself. I so love to go to parties. And you I get invited a lot. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah I mean, was, I enjoy it. It was fun. What you Watching you. Honestly. Yeah. It's crazy. But the kids had fun. And we had a blast. Yeah. The children had a lot of fun. We had the bangers. I know it's illegal. Yeah. It's illegal. Mm -hmm. We had the bangers, the kids. I mean, the sound. Yeah, we did a lot of things. Anyway, let's fireworks. go on a quick break. Fireworks. I'm not saying you know, English word here. But fireworks, yes, and it was fantastic. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll just read you the front page because we're not even ready to start reviewing papers. We don't know what's going on in Nigeria. In the last one, we came. We've not booted properly, but we'll tell you what happened in the front page. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. All right, we're going to start with uh, the front page of The Nation. Uh, Obasanjo under fire for endorsing LP candidate Obi. Um, Auditor General of the Federation. 17.877 million barrels of crude oil exported without records. Um, we also have 18 die in New Year Day accidents. Why 2023 will bring... What 2023 will bring, says... Pastor Adeboye, Uyedekbo, and Olukoya. Kanduji Akere Dolu Belo drop, drum up support for Tinumbu, and two feared killed in military checkpoint attack by gunmen. Okay, so let's um, say very quickly what is in um, the punch. 
Someone on TikTok? <laughs> you have it? No. No, no, no. You sent you. The punch. Obasanjo endorses OB as Atiku Tinubu camps protest. Aja policemen caught drinking on duty and abandoned work. Picture story of a new year. Governor's wives welcome first babies with gifts. They have the gifts. I always love yeah. that. Every year. That, that very, every year. Every, every uh, governor's wife always does that, which is really, really cool. Ogun couple killed after crossover service, son abducted. Bad story. Motorist kills five dancers during party. Six militants. Let me get that. Six million, actually. Six, um, six million meters for deployment before June, says federal government. NCDC emergency team meets over China COVID-19 surge. Jonathan Adeboye make 100 most reputable Africans list. And scarcity, federal government plant inspection for fuel stations tanks. Okay, let's us move on quickly now to Vanguard. Um, Atiku. Tinubu kick as Obasanjo endorses Peter Obi. That Obasanjo's endorsement of Peter Obi really, really went viral. Everyone was talking yeah. about it. Mm -hmm. um, gunmen raise Ebubiagu commander's house and kills wife. Sokoto gunmen kill PDP ward chairman elder brother. Aviation sector issues in 2022, expectations in 2023. Uh, we have petrol shortage. Depot owners adamant sell petrol at 200 naira per liter. Gang. Calls for forex reform spread as transactions rise 9%. Lawyer petitions AGF over plots to arrest CBN Governor Emir Fele. 2023, great year for Nigerians, says Okowa. And some balloons will deflate in 2023, says Adeboye. Hmm. I was at that service, so I not how I said it. <laughs> that wasn't how you said it. <laughs> oil, oil, oil reflate. Set up sues governors over failure to account for 625 billion naira. So those are the three major papers. So is there any other story that stuck out for you? I know we didn't read the papers today. We didn't get to read the papers. Mm. Our vendor didn't bring the paper today. But, it was um, on just later. <laughs> yes, yeah. that was pretty so interesting. That, that, that was everywhere yesterday. And mm -hmm. what us talking at home, you know, uh, this time around he said that the most important constituency is the constituency of the youth. That's some, something like I've always heard him say. So I was saying to my husband that it's usual for Baba to follow the crowd whenever he speaks you know when it was the change time he spoke with the crowd he's never been against the crowd whenever he writes his letter so there's nothing on to um unexpected, unexpected. In his letter mm, for misha um, every other person is entitled to their view and he's mm. just as he is to his own view so I always like stories about um, the first of the year, starting the year on good news, you know. Mm. So I, I, it's, it's a bit sentimental. I don't know who started this particular thing oh, where yeah. the first ladies would mm. go to the hospital and welcome the babies. But I, I feel like um, it's interesting to be born on the first of the year. Yes. And imagine if you are now born in a hospital where the governor's wife, wife comes to mm. visit you. Oh. So it's just sort of... And, you know, we're all mothers, so Burton is a very, okay. very... You have touched a court to say my heart. It's just reminded me, it's my sister's birthday today. <laughs> oh, yes! Imagine that! Happy birthday, Mariam's sister. Rama, too. Ramat. Happy birthday, Ramat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm supposed to be like, what's happened? <laughs> like yeah. you did. So just a final paper, then we'll go on a break, because we, we have we have two really um, important guests. Powerful today, so guests. That's why we want to wrap up quickly today. Daily Sun, very quickly. Presidency of Basson joined Dossi Peter B. Adeboye Olukoya seek prayer for Nigeria, one of dangers ahead. And Ohane Ze, Middle Belt Forum, Arewa Youth, Onayekon, PFN, all list qualities of Buhari success. So we have to wrap up on paper review. As I said, it's earlier. We have two really, really special guests today. So we have to start off quickly. We're going to go on a quick break. When we come back, we're bringing our first guest of the year. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
thanks for staying with us. Joining us now is the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, Senator Lauren Ibe Mamura. He'll be speaking on the science and technology drive of President Muhammad, Muhammad Buhari's uh, administration. He's also speaking to us on the ambition of Ashwaji Bola Metinubu at some point. Welcome to the show, sir. It's good to have you. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Right. So in the last few months, we've been seeing quite a few things that, present, that the president has been doing, you know, almost like a recap of his administration. And we haven't heard, we haven't heard so much about what he's done in science and tech um, and innovation at best. Could you just give us a summary in what, what your ministry has done, especially in this administration, and your plans in the next few months before he closes out? Right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, to start with, uh, let me say Happy New Year to all of you. And everybody's sir. looking radiant. And, uh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you, sir. So, um, you see, the first thing is to say that the mandate of the ministry, it takes its root from the Constitution itself. And when you look at the Constitution under Fundamental Objectives and Directive Principles of State Policy under Section 18 of the Constitution, precisely subsection two. It says government shall promote science and technology. And uh, when you look at uh, science, technology, innovation, in all ramifications, you're looking at what is popularly known as smart everything now. Mm. Smartphone, mm -hmm. smart television, smart car, smart houses, and of course smart cities. Mm -hmm. And essentially what you're looking at is automation, yeah. if you like. That's the main thing. Irrespective of what your field is, right. you need automation to get things done faster, to get things done better, to uh, achieve bigger results. Now, we have our policies, uh, various policies that are in place, uh, from which various uh, projects take their route as well. And of course, these policies are driven by the agencies under the Federal Ministry of Science, Technology, and Innovation. We have um, 18 agencies, you know, and of course, mostly research institutes, research agencies, or research-based institutes. And, uh, you know, these are the, call it, the implementing mm. um, agencies right. for these various uh, okay. projects. We're still Minister for st of State for Health. Yeah. And so I will not really uh, drain you too much because I am not pleased. I followed the work of the past Minister for Science, Technology, and Innovation right. until date. I'm very displeased with him and his, uh, you know, the work because I know that industry, that ministry is one that would spark the jobs that we're looking for. I kept yeah. looking towards the solutions that will come. Mm. And, you know, I would have loved that he had a list of works of young Nigerians that were assisted by that ministry and that mm. are doing internationally well. Because we see when they cross the border to somewhere else, yeah. something miraculous happens. Yes. So under, he, under this, I would not want to, I don't think it would be what? right right now. Or did you take over any such from him? Now, uh, my dear sister, please don't be displeased <laughs> with what? Uh, you see, there are times, you see, when you are there, there are some constraints that you need to find a way to get around. I just mentioned policies. For example, the major one, you have the science, technology, and innovation policy. And of course, policy itself is just a roadmap of things that you want to do. Mm -hmm. But you may have your constraints, maybe in terms of funding, maybe in terms of uh, even the, the, the systems around you and all that. But then, you still have to act. And you can't do these things alone. You still need this uh, um, partnership with our uh, private sector, with some, even some other agencies, mm -hmm. in, you know, or ministries and uh, yeah. departments of mm -hmm. governments to work together so that you can achieve. Mm -hmm. Then, even when you have, because there are a lot of things that have been, uh, you know, inventions that, that, that we, in various uh, areas, you know, in technology itself, in uh, ICT, in, uh, you know, electricity, generation, power, and all that. You, all these things are there. But again, all the various uh, inventions that have been made, you don't really benefit from them until you take them to market. Mm -hmm. So there has to be that handshake okay. between the 
uh, research uh, no industry. Let's get a few more questions in for you. Okay. So, Sarah, there's this, um, what I'm hearing recently, because just like Nima says, the ministry isn't very front facing, but um, there's the science and technology parks that I've been hearing about recently. Yeah. I would like to understand what it means and what you think the impact will be on yes. you know, our country. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's one of the, that's one of the mandates of Mr. President Tiros, that is to develop science parks across the country. And uh, what we're doing is to start from one per each geopolitical zone. And we are working on, on, on that as we speak. So that we then expand. If we take one in each geopolitical zone, we can expand to one in each state. And then the federal capital territory, that will be 37. And then we can go on and that. But when we, you know, we came in in July, and I say we, uh, my colleague, the Honorable Minister of State, and then myself. And then we looked at what we think we could do within the short space you know, of time as it's left for us. Yeah. Yes, so we were looking at what we call a low hanging fruit, mm -hmm. you know, that will give quick, quick wins. The past minister was one of the longest serving. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. So right, we are working right. on those parks. Is, is it parks, as the word says, where people mm. can gather. Good. Mm -hmm. And then you can have exchange of ideas. You mm. can have people coming in with their own issues, with their own uh, ideas. And then you develop what you have on right. ground within the ambit of our own, own situation. Right. Okay, and so one on. of the biggest um, challenge that we faced in almost every industry is also bedeviling science and tech. And I don't even see how... No matter how amazing the ideas that you and the Minister for State for Science and Technology come up with, you're still going to deal with the poor electricity. You're going to deal with the fact that there are poor internet quality. You're going to deal with the fact that there is um, uh, most of our brightest minds, as soon as the ideas are ripe, they are relocating. They are mm. on a jackpot spree. Mm. We're going to deal with the fact that there is poor funding for yeah. innovation within Nigeria. And yeah. the, there are countries where people, they are calling in talent and funding them. So yeah. I, I don't think that it is something within your ministry alone. So the question for me is, what are the key ministries you feel need to be up and doing for science and technology to thrive in Nigeria? I would say education, but what would you say would be mm, the other well, ministries that need to be effective? Well, you, you, you know, I've always argued that when you talk of human capital development, two ministries are key, mm. education and health. Those are the two major ones. And I always argue that we should not put them on the same pedestal with other ministries. Yes, it's a situation of all animals are equal, but some are more equal. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Because you cannot develop an individual if that is not healthy. Sure. Or you, have, you, 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 you find it more difficult. So education is key. Good health is key. There are two major ones. But having said that, <coughs> Particularly the issue, we have electric, Electricity um, Commission of Nigeria, is here, mm. you know, that is one of the agencies on that. And uh, they are into a lot of uh, um, things in terms of uh, renew, renewable energy, mm -hmm. because that's what we are talking about now. Renewable energy, you talk of the solar, and, all. and there's a lot that's been done in that, in that regard. And of course, using other means, uh, hydropower, wind power, name it, you know, and all that. So, because it's very key for everything, you need that power to drive the, okay. the whole thing. So, as Nima said, I wouldn't, um, there's a lot of questions we have on technology. I certainly do because I watch a lot of movies and I know that technology is one thing. A lot of these mm. prime um, movies have, mm. that's how they catch uh, many of these um, um, Criminal. uh, criminals. So, but we don't talk about that because we know there's so much work to be done. But I, I'd like to touch on the relationship with Ashiraju, because I know that's one of the reasons why we've also brought you in. Um, you served as a chairman of the, the DEC TV speaker of Arthur Assembly during his time. Um, tell us a bit about the person, because a lot of people don't, there's a lot of confusion on who this person is. Some, the, 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 the people, people are they're not clear on who are, those who know Ashiraju know Ashiraju, but many who don't still have that confusion. What do you know about this man? Well, uh, well thank you, Mariah. I'm happy the way you put it. You see, uh, some of us are privileged to have known him for so long, since at least 20, I mean, no, 1988, when he came back from exile. And we were on ground, you know, and all that. So, ever since I've been close enough to know this, this man, it's not to read about him. 
mm. but know him from close quarters. Now, the first thing is that he's a very generous person. Mm. He's, he's even generous to a fault. Mm. But politically now, three things stand him out. The first is courage. Ashwaju is a very, very, Ashwaju Bola Amentinum is a very courageous person. He's not afraid to take decisions. Once he's convinced that this will be in the best interest of the people. And no wonder well, they, they refer to him as lion of body lion. Of course, they, you know, if you talk of courage, <laughs> the lion is the courage of a lion. The second thing is vision. Ability to see the future. And they see things that others don't see. And at the end of the day, you, you discover that he's right about what, about the vision. And, and it, that's one of the qualities of, of, a, of, of a leader, you know, vision. And of course, when you, I liken his vision to that of an ego. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, far, afar. The third thing is his, uh, you know, ability to strategize. You know, I, I call him a master strategist. <laughs> you know, I, if, you, if you're a chess player, then you know the role of, of the knight. The, the knight symbolizes strategy, you know, or the chess board, because you don't even know how it's going to move. And uh, so those three things stand him out. And I always argue again that for me, as a party man, my duty is to promote and market my candidate. And no apologies about that. So now, in so doing, these are the things I tell people when they ask questions, you know, similar to what you ask. Okay. And uh, For some of us, in terms of reaching out, you see, there is what I call the ministry of political influence. It has the largest uh, ministry of political influence. Right. So you, that's why you see people from all walks of life come to see him. Because okay, let me of let me go on a quick break. When I come back, I'll let uh, Nima ask her own questions. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We still have our guest here. You know, I was going to ask a question. Yes, I was going to <coughs> talk about um, your work as with the with uh, the presidential candidate of the APC. Mm -hmm. So you said you know him personally. Most yeah. most of us have just read about him, but the entire set that worked with him as his as gov as, on his cabinet as governor mm -hmm. are doing amazingly. Let's talk about how much he's mentored people. And how many young people as, is it presently mentoring? So we're looking towards having mm. younger people in, cabinet. in his cabinet if he becomes yeah. president. Yes, you, you, you can look forward to that. You know, Ashwaju Bula Ahmed you know, is a talent hunter. <laughs> so he has a way of just, uh, you know, identifying people who can do what. And uh, he's still on record that he is um, the crop of uh, commissioners and uh, other <laughs> people who worked with him, particularly between 99 and 2003. Uh, I think you know, it was the best in this country from the accounts of uh, uh, different uh, people. So he has, he has that ability and beyond. And he's been doing that up to now. He has, he has so many people that that I just mentioned to you that I mean, earlier that a lot of people come to him to seek mentorship, to seek uh, guidance, to seek for his uh, opinion and advice, you know, on on a number of issues. So is is he has, okay. I mean, is that blessed? Okay. So um, for me, we the, the relationship that most Nigerians, the average don't know this person one-on-one, -on -one, the presidential candidate for APC. Mm -hmm. And many of us have, are having to take what social media feeds us as our source of information. And social media has consistently shown a part of him not being very physically fit, 
and him not being very healthy. And I have said on the show, I'm, I'm worried about that personally because I don't have any other way to verify if he's healthy or not. But my, I've been hoping that when I get an opportunity to ask questions from someone who has a one-on-one -on -one relationship with him, I can hear from someone that how fit is he? Is he someone that, is he, based on your own relationship, can he handle the responsibilities of leading a challenged country like Nigeria? Well, the, 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 the first question is, who determines the fitness of an individual? Doctor. Yes, he's a doctor. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a medical doctor. So, I mean, so, and uh, the, the, there is what we call spot diagnosis, you know, where you just look at a, a, a patient and then without even asking questions, without even doing any, any physical examination, and then without taking any history, you just say this. So, uh, for me, uh, I think uh, reasonably he's fit enough to handle the job before him uh, because uh, yes much as I, I believe that yes there is need for some physical energy as well but you probably need more of a mental energy because you have been bombarded with a lot of all sorts of things the documents uh, you know opinions and all that and which you need to sit down to analyze and be able to take what you okay. think is the best yeah. in the, so, the circumstance so my question is um, there was a, a, a sort of media party that he had and um, questions were asked of him and with him beside him were you know a few other um, individuals with him who also helped answer that question um, some of the questions or give their opinions as well and there were two sides to the um, response to that mm -hmm. and I would like to know being a party man being a man that has been in government what do you think of his style where it seems that you know he's willing to in involve other people in decision making and taking out policies is this a man who works best with other people and how important is that sort of strategy as the president of a country well you know as a, uh, as a president as a governor as the overall boss you take the final decision mm -hmm. yep. but what is important is to be able to process analyze what you have been fed with because the buck passing stops at mm. your table. Right. That's the thing. And I always say that, you see, the, it's only one person, as far as I'm concerned, that is elected as the chief executive at the state mm -hmm. and at the, at the federal level. Because every other person, and I repeat, every other person is nominated by that person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what the constitution right. says. You know? <laughs> so, uh, and I believe what is important is right. that ability to uh, make right. the right decision. At Thank the end you of so it. much, Senator. I mean, it was a pleasure. We'd like to have you longer, but as I said, we have two big guests today, so we have to, have to find a way to manage the time. But thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us this morning. We're definitely going to bring you back because we would like to monitor what the Ministry of Science, Technology, and Innovation is doing. As Nima has said, we're not very happy with what we've seen so far, but we hope that we can see much better as you still it's retain that, that um, position. Well, that's all. Thank you very much. Yes, I can sir. assure you that, uh, God willing, we'll finish strong and okay. finish well yeah, as well. Yeah, that's a lot of Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Let's go on a break. When we come back, bring in our special guest, another special guest we have. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Joining us on the show now is the governor of Lagos State, Babaji De Olushola Sonwolu. He'll be speaking on why the people of Lagos State should entrust him again with their mandate. Basically, why he deserves a second term. Welcome to the show, sir. Well, thank you very much. Finally brought thank you to you. your view. Well, okay. After three finally. and a half years, what do I work on? Um, you know <laughs> how it is. Uh, happy well, to have happy you. New Year. We're happy to have you. So thank there's you so much, much to talk about, so we're going to go straight into okay. it. Okay. Um, your themes agenda was what we started with, and um, everybody was excited about um, transportation and what you wanted to do. I would, I would like to start with transportation, especially because um, that's a major issue we have in Lagos State. People flooding, walking into Lagos every single day. We don't understand how... 
to manage this influx of Nigerians using the bus, um, the taxis. Um, you've recently launched the rail. People are still saying it's not enough. So what, are you, what is your government doing to help improve transportation across the state? <clears throat> Okay, well, thank you very much, um, ladies, and Happy New Year once happy again. Happy New Year to you. And Happy New Year to all of your viewers. Well, so, so I decided to make it um, a bright morning for you and for our citizens. You know, it's okay. a day in which we have a holiday, and, and I think there's no better time for me to have the audience and also listen. And thank you very thank much you. for having me. You. So you started very well. You know, transportation, right, which happens to be the first pillar in our team's agenda, you know, it was something that we designed out of questions from our audience during you know, um, our campaign and after we won the election. So it's not something that just fell on us. Right. And you could see that it was also the ones that people had asked us the most you know, challenging um, issue to solve. Mm -hmm. So it's traffic management and transportation. Mm -hmm. So to date, um, in terms of transportation and what has been our direct interventions in that space, right? Um, high capacity buses, which are called the BRT, the high end buses, we've introduced about 1,300. You know, um, the medium capacity, we've introduced almost about another 1,000. Um, the last mile buses, which are like the um, bigger version of Korokwe, 8, 10 seater, we've introduced about 500. Um, and also taxis, we've introduced, you know, the lag ride, which is about another 1,000. So, so these are just interventions in straight, you know, road infrastructure, mm -hmm. right? And it's road infrastructure that we see, you know, as the ones that all of us usually apply today. But you know that one third of Lagos is also water. Mm. So the question we'll ask is how well can we use the water infrastructure exactly. as a means to move people from one point to the other? Okay. The good news is that we're currently constructing, and we've actually finished eight of those jetties. We're constructing 16 jetties concurrently, wow. right? So they are like small, small terminals, right? Okay. Which, you know, people can embark and disembark. And about eight of them are, have been completed. So we, we just need time to go and commission and just cut tape and so that we can open it up for people. So that is meant to improve movement on the waterways. But we're not sitting back just to wait you know, for that completion. We've added about 22 ferries. 22 ferries meaning they are carrying 60 passengers, 50, 40, in fairly big capacities like that. Right. I think more of the 40 and, and 30 in the 22, right? So, so we've done that, that intervention as well. And we've opened up, right? Just two weeks ago, I opened the first, what you can call the first you know, security command and control center on the waterways, oh, where we have CCTV cameras. Yeah, it's there. Where we have CCTV cameras, we have, we have equipment that can remotely go and pick people from the water. Because Kidding security so on the water... So if I'm on the water, water you yes. can see me. If, if there's an emergency and you yeah. drop, we have equipment. We bought equipment, they can remotely go. Mm. They are like a ball, but they can drive on their own without anybody, and they can go and rescue you, you know, and bring you back. It was launched about two weeks ago, mm. right? Nice. And we have the command and control center at Falomo. That's, and we've done fairly enough dredging. We'll need to still do you know, a bit right. more. That's number two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then the third one is the rail that you talked about. Mm -hmm. So the plan you know, for public transportation is we'll have what we call an integrated urban mass transportation system. Integrated urban <coughs> mass, using <coughs> rail, using waterways, and using the BRT road infrastructure. Once all of those three connections are completed, right, what you will see is that we will have an interplay of a single solution of payment, the carry card, right? We went on the train when we, when we did infrastructure commission, the carry card will open up. At the, the, the lag ferry is the carry card they're using. On the buses as well is the carry, carry card they're going. So it's a single payment solution designed by young Nigerians, Lagosians, and we're seeing it wow. is working very, very well. So the plan eventually is to be able to reduce journey time, you know? Um, um, Tokwe is to ensure that uh, you as a mother, you can fairly predict your journey. Mm. A mm. journey that hitherto will probably take you about an hour and a half or mm. something. How can we reduce it to yeah. 30, okay. 40 All minutes? Right. We have a lot of so questions. That, mm. So that you can improve the quality of your life. Mm. Yes. You know, you can pre pretty much determine when you need to get out and when right. you need to come in. Right? And also to make Lagos in a resilient, urban, you know, um, um, working city right. for, for all of you. Right? Are we there yet? Maybe we're not fully there, but we have a roadmap. Yeah. We have a clear vision. We have a walkthrough right. that will take us. That will take us there. So I, I, I live on Badabi Express. Absolutely, I know. And so I've seen all your work. I don't have anything to complain about, but just a little. Yeah. It just it's not just there yet. Yeah. So thank you so much for what you've done. I remember the state it was in when you came in and when you visited and yeah. promised, and it's been delivered. Especially at the trade fair where my community. Yeah. 
um, you know, enters yeah. and goes into the express. But I see the work going on, and I see so many other factors affecting it, especially Lupeng's activities yeah. there. Constantly, because they need to access the depot yeah. and locked in. Yeah. How do you plan to subsequently manage that? This past month has been neck deep in stress for us living in that community. Also, on that Badagri Express, where I'm aware that from the Eric Moore um, to Okoko is the, yeah. is the Lagos State um, I ha yeah. handle of, I mean, side of the yeah. construction, and the ramps are being taken out. Yes, they're building the bridges yeah. overhead, yeah. but we need the ramps, like you know, you have on the Kurudu Expressway, where you're going, maybe your community is just two steps ahead, you can exit. I understand. So, what exactly is the plan? We've Okay. So we spoke <coughs> with the SA and she insists that the design is different. No, no, okay. I so, live there. I think it's not practical. Well, okay. Thank you very much. And, and thank you for, for, the, for the comments you said. So the plan around that corridor, right, is to continue to improve, you know, apart from the right of way, you know, so it's a, it's a road that either towards four lanes, two lanes, two lanes that will have turned to ten lanes, mm -hmm. ten lanes, right? So you can see yeah. it's more than double the number, right? Um, and so the plan is to have one BRT corridor, have one lane for BRT, the most inward lane, have two express road, then I have two outer road, right? So on, on the bypass we are talking about, if, for example, you are coming in from Eric Moore, you know that at some point in time, you know, before you get to Festac or wherever it is you are going to tee off, make sure that you will leave the express road and go on the service lane. It's when you're on the service lane that you can now get out. If you come out from Festac and you're going to be coming out at Agoju again. Why would you want to enter the express road? Stay on the service <laughs> lane and, <laughs> and just smiling. continue to go until when you get to Agoju uh, or you get to mm. trade fair. One of the challenges, and I understand where she's coming from, is that mm. she wants to get on the express, mm. right? And she wants to accept because it's express, it's two lanes. But she wants to also exit at her own convenience. Road transportation is also not designed like that. Mm. It cannot be when you, are, express is express. Right. If I want to do 40 kilometers, I'm on express. Let me fly the express for at least yeah. 35 kilometers before I get on the service lane. But if I'm going to do two and a half kilometers, I shouldn't get on the express. Yeah. And imagine that when I want to get out, yeah. it will be available for me to get. Yeah. I, I understand. You see, I was smiling. Yes. Because what makes me want to stay on the express is not my fault. I understand. It's, it's the Papa activity. And I will get to, and I I will get to, to you. Stick with you, you know, because so of it's of a thing. chicken and egg thing. Mm. So which one should we solve first? Mm. Mm. Do you understand? So what is called an express cannot be access to everybody and anybody at every because time. they are moving fast. They want to get to, you know, Agbara and begin mm. to go to Baragri right. faster right. and quicker. Yeah. And that's what we promise. Mm. But if you are moving from, you know, from Festa to Agboju to Satellite Town to design. this, you cannot, but I, I understand the challenge. The challenge which you talked about is Nupeng, for example. Yeah. We're Blocks. sitting, we're mm. sitting with NNPC. Okay, so this is a challenge. Which one should we for? That corridor strategically, mm feeds about 65% of the total fuel corridor of this country. That's why you have all the tank farms there. I didn't create it, mm. right? It's a national issue that we really cannot. And that's why, if we look at it, we didn't wait for federal government. That Buba Marwa road that I'm doing, it's cost us close to 10 billion, right? This is a federally used road by all of the tankers that, that she's and talking about. The construction. And they will not even allow, because we're willing to, conf the concrete is like this, that mm. we're trying to finish up right. for them. So that, that will be some sort of a continuous conversation that we need to have with NNPC. We don't control New Peg. Right. So they will tell you that if you don't give them access as well, they won't be foil in, in Auchi. Mm. They won't be foil <laughs> in every part of the country. So it's, it's something that we right. need to continue to solve and dialogue upon. Let me come but to, talk to with. say to you, mm. you know, uh, um, Nima, I'm coming to, I know you need a lot of bypass roads, you know, in that Ojo so Iru, Musafe, Jaw, and all of it, we're doing, we're doing Afro Media, we're continuing to do those inner roads so that you can indeed have relief, you know, not just on the express road, you know. We'll finish, you know, Navy Town Road very soon. We're on um, Old Ojo Road so that we can have alternative. So the, like the one you're talking about, if you don't need to go on the express mm, road, uh, right. go on Old Ojo Road. And it's long, it's a it's couple of like six, seven right. kilometers, and we're doing it. The phase one of it is CC, CC, and they've started. Okay. So, you could see, so it's a solution that we're thought to, <coughs> and it's happening, and we're, we're going to deliver right, it. Let me let Tokwe jump, because there's so many questions, and we, oh, have, to, yeah. Yeah, we have to use this one hour. So, so many. Tokwe, go ahead. Um, one, I need to appreciate what you've done in Ekwe for all of us in the real estate space. Your yeah. video is our biggest marketing tool. <laughs> just, we just show your video, and people start buying, and we, we have to appreciate that. But whenever I'm going to Ekwe, it yeah. is war. Yeah. And it's, it's been a very, very, um, in the past two years. Yeah. Um, 
the two challenges that yeah. is been going on. One, a lot of people are coming into this country, into Lagos, and they become beggars on the road. So you're stopping along that lekki axis just for traffic lights, and they just gather so you. Know. They are not criminals, but they are begging. And there's a way, you know, it's, it's just inhuman for a human being to just leave them on the road like that. I believe that there's an industry around them because they come there, children, babies, all of that. And it can pose a potential risk in the future. So I want to find out from you, what is, the, what is Lagos State's plan to reduce the number of mothers and children that are allowed to be on the road begging? That's, that, that for me is a major question. Let me just oh, I thought you were talking about right. traffic. Well, then the traffic. Well, on okay, the road. so I, I thought you was actually good. Because yeah. you said Ekwe. Yes. So let's so take everybody. it back. Yes. And Tokwe, let's, let's be analytic about it. So um, we've done a, a, an 18 kilometer road from Eleko Junction to I Ekwe. I see it. Two lanes, we've turned to six lanes. Neymar, they will not tell you. Rigid pavement. Two lanes. No, 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 I've seen it. Two, sir. six lanes. Highest ever level of concrete. That's phase one of it, mm. completed. The phase two of it now start from Eleko Junction. We're coming all the way to Aja. Mm. It's 33 kilometers. We're turning it into six lanes as well. And they see contractors there working. She said a few things. It's the highest real estate development corridor that we cannot even keep abreast with. You know, so when you see all of those challenges, right, and as a government, we're trying to solve them, right, it becomes herculean because as we are laying the solutions, right, other things are coming. So we are the bane of our own, you know, successes. Mm. Each time we have succeeded, we're attracting a lot more people onto this corridor, you know, and so that's what you see. So Tokwe saw that indeed the roads are beginning to get widened up, right, mm. and, and we're doing a 10 kilometer regional road, which is a bypass from VGC all the way to Freedom Road, right? Six lanes. We're not doing one, two, three, six lanes. We're, we're taking it head on just for us to be able to solve it. Right? So those are some of the things that we're doing on the infrastructure. Mm. And the big one, which we promised Nigerians, Lagosians, we're going to announce before the end of the year, was on the 30th, which is the fourth Milabri, which will start from your corridor as well, from um, Abraham Adesoya, all the way, climbing the bridge, you know, to Ikorodu, you know, and, and to sort of like solve like an M25 mm. solution. That's, mm. that's, the, that's, the, that's the concept, and I think it's important for us to have. But she had asked a question, yes. you know, which is closer to Lekki phase one and phase two, on issues around, you know, um, um, women and children on the street. So, so it's, it's, it's a double-edged thing, right? These are Nigerians, these are your citizens that, have, that are looking for sustenance, that are looking for livelihood on a daily basis. I tell you, we go clear them almost every week, but they find themselves there. So is the solution for me to say that I want to pack them to another part of the country? No. The solution is we continue to build additional homes you know, and continue to give them solutions where they can continue, they can become useful yeah. to, their, to, to, the, to their family, you know, train them, see how they are, we can take them up and give them skills, you know, so that they become, you know, um, 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 providers of jobs themselves. Yeah, right. That's the solution. It's, it's a national issue. Yeah, yeah. And you don't, need, you don't need a visa to come into yeah, Lagos. Yeah. So it's not me that I've created yeah, that. Yeah. It's a social inclusion issue that we all need to continue to solve. You know, okay. as, as, we, as we go along. Let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue this conversation with our guests. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks. We still have Mr. Governor of Lagos State with us as our guest. Miriam was going to ask a question. Go ahead, yes, please. Yes, Mr. Governor. So I know that you're a viewer of our show, and I don't know if you are aware of how passionate I am about our environment. Okay. Yes. So I would like to know what your plans are concerning, you know, waste management. I know that in 2019 you talked about the landfill and um, the amount of waste we get. It like over, you said, the 10,000 tons of About 12, waste. 15, almost 12, 14,000 metric tons. Fantastic. And we also know that in waste there's money. And I'm wondering if you have done anything in that area okay. since. We know that Lama is doing a lot of work. Yeah. We can see the improvement in, yeah. you know, going around and yeah. getting the waste off our streets. Yeah. But when it gets to the landfills, what yeah. are we doing with that and the value okay. chain? Thank you. That. Well, thank you, Miriam. And that speaks to also the issues around climate change and all of the things that we can solve. 
So as a mega city, we generate between 12 to 13,000 metric tons of waste every day, largely domestic waste. You know, some um, um, are industrial waste, but are largely, you know, domestic waste. And you're right, you know, a lot of people will tell you there's money in waste, which we're beginning to see. There's a lot of sorting that is happening, that people are doing recycling, but it still hasn't answered the huge number of opportunities that is there. These are investments that I believe the private sector can indeed take on. And we've seen a few people come up, right? But they never finish through. I'm actually with Anamo National Team. I'm actually waiting for somebody that has the funding that is required to do the end-to-end -end of waste conversion. We've done waste to fertilizer in the state before, right? Organic fertilizer, right? It became unsustainable for them. Because even for them, the cost of a fertilizer when it finished, you know, was even more expensive than the, than the regular one. I've seen people come to me and say they want to do waste to power. And I say, great, I'm ready to give you, you know, 3,000, 2,000 metric tons, right? But you cannot say that I must, by extension, wow. buy, you know, whatever. You want me to give you, you know, a power purchase first before you mm. even come up with a thing, yeah. I don't have a problem with evacuating the power when you finish it, right? But I'm not going to start with giving you a PPA even before you show me what your funding is, okay. right? And that's where usually the problem is. With us, with, because with my PPA, what it does is that you just go everywhere in and the world and you just get funds oh, in which, so we, exactly. So we've seen a few challenges like that. And that's why we're, we're, we're here saying that if we see real people that want, that have a funding, it's a long-term thing. We're ready to ensure that we transfer the waste that you require to whatever location that you, you need them so that we can indeed convert this waste to whatever it is. Yeah. A lot of people are doing waste recycling. You know, mm -hmm. they are. But it's just that the numbers are still not huge enough. And for us, the interventions that we've done is that we're building a lot of um, um, small, you know, collection centers. You know, we're doing about six of them so that we can reduce and we can compact them more mm. before they even get to the sanitary landfill and get them a lot more. Well, you are right. You've seen all our interventions with Loma. Mm -hmm. we, we procured a lot more compactor trucks, dino beans, you know, we've improved them, you know, what they look like outside. So, but the... the, the the, the, the final end of it, government can really not mm. do everything, right. you know, in terms of even trying to get myself to become, you know, a waste converter <laughs> expert. <laughs> Let the private sector come. The waste are there. Right. 12,000, 13,000 metric tons. That is your source of raw material that you require. Yeah. And we can sort it from your kitchen, put your, 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 your yellow bottles, bottles in, 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 put your, you know, put, your, put them in different commands so that it becomes a lot easier for the private sector to want Let's to take. Let's talk about um, education for a moment because I know that that's an area you've invested quite a bit. I mean, yeah. I hear that your education budget in, in Lagos is larger than a few states' entire budget. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's incredible. Could you give us an idea or break down what you've, what done? you've done? Because I know you've done basic education. Some are worried about what you're doing in tertiary. Yeah. They're not really sure, especially even the, um, um, the vocational schools. Yeah. They, they're, not, they're, not, they're not clear. They okay. hear a quick sell. Yeah, but but, they, what, they what, what, what else is going on with the educational well, okay. sector? So, so thank you. So you're right. You know, year on year, we've deliberately increased our budget in education. It's amazing. Because we believe that that is one intervention in one area that we need to show, you know, real sustainability. Mm. Um, I think that last year we did about 11, between 11 and 12 percent of our total budget. So to date, we built in, in infrastructure, we built over 1,047 new classrooms in less than four years. That's over 1,047 new classrooms, right? So we've touched, you know, about 197 school, new school projects. And we've touched close to 1,000 different things in, in schools. We've added about 200,000 new chairs and benches. We've done um, about almost 2,000 new bed spaces in, in, um, in the boarding schools. Um, we've, we've also intervened you know, in all of the you know, um, um, vocational schools and, and, the, and the likes that you have. But for me, the interesting one is what we've done with primary schools, which is where we started, which is where education truly, really should start. And, and I'm sure, Mora, you know, mm. you know, which is where EcoExcel starts from. So what we've done you know, is that we've been able to you know, have tablets that are given to teachers Mm -hmm. at primary schools for them to have the same learning curriculum, right, at that level, right, have the same lesson notes, right, ensure that we can reduce, you know, absenteeism, truancy, and, you know, even teachers not coming. We can remotely monitor them and see who is teaching what. And the quality of teaching across primary schools, we make them almost the same. It doesn't matter what part of the state you are. So those are interventions. And we've seen growth in the number of people coming back to our primary schools. Mm. We have actually seen, 
you know, growth in the number of people coming back to our primary schools. From private schools. From private schools or from whatever. I mean, you know, that's one. Secondly, in our secondary schools, which is also a place where it's important for you to hold them and ensure that you can handheld them. Um, we've started the comprehensive school system. Comprehensive schools meaning that um, you can be in a school where it's not just the brick and mortar normal education that you're being. You want to teach you things around entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. things around music, things around acting, you know, cookery. Make sure that you're coming out with a rounded knowledge, okay. you know, yeah, of what you want to, you want your life to shape. So we have some, some schools that we've selected you know, to, 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 to start on that on comprehensive school. So we have, you know, over 6,000 teachers that have been, that have been recruited. Mm -hmm. And we're not just doing it for pupils. We're also ensuring that we can keep our teachers in classrooms, mm -hmm. which is always one of the problem. Because once they see something, they want to go into other professions. Mm -hmm. And how are we able to do that? Retain them, ensure that we can identify the best teachers every year, mm -hmm. give them skills, train them very well, it's and it's also it's give them vehicles. We give them brand new vehicles, you know, best teachers, mm -hmm. year on year, morale, you've been part of that. Mm -hmm. 13, the last, mm. the, the one for, for late last year, and every year. They thought we were just going to do it for one year and stop, for three years consistently. And we're beginning to see it in effect. At holidays, we also intervene. They have extra lesson curriculums for pupils that are in YEC, SSS, you know, um, for um, year, year 10, year 11, you know, studies. And you know what? We're beginning to see the results. Mm. In three years, when we came in, the average pass of YEC in our schools was under 50%, was actually around 42, 45%. Now we've crossed 80%. Wow. In three years, we've crossed 80%. So they to, including maths and English, we've seen pass right. in our secondary schools right. to about 82, 83%. Last, last year, I think it was about 83, 84%. So we're excited with our interventions. We're beginning to see the effects and impact of it. But one more thing Morayo asks is that what are we doing with tertiary institutions? Yeah. For the first time, you know, we all, some of you, I'm sure, went to last. <laughs> um, our father, yes. Latif Jacquardi, created LASU 40 years ago or so. We've been able to get, you know, um, two additional state tertiary institutions, University of Science and Technology and the University of Education. So Lagos, from one, has three higher... Your, higher critics, your critics say that it's, it's, it's on paper. It's Hello? On paper. That's what they're saying. <laughs> That's so unfair. Mm. When we have intakes already, ah. when we have vice chancellors, we have the full complements yes. of a university. We've increased, you know, we've increased our subvention three folds right. and building Senate buildings in the school, two new investors as we speak. Ah, Brand so new Senate so buildings. So the critics have it. So well. it's real. Mm -hmm. okay. And so what we've done is that the ones that are, in, you know, that are before, they are transiting, mm -hmm. you know. So the ones that are in, maybe in the, in the College of Education, but they are transiting in the next two years. So it's running pari pursu. Right. We're not dropping them, but it's running pari pursu. So, do you, quick, quick one, please, okay. on education. Do you yes. have any intervention concerning the current um, UK move? So, the UK has declared they are going to be taking um, teachers. teachers. And I was saying it on the show that many of our teachers. public school teachers yes. are the most qualified Absolutely. for this um, process they want Absolutely. to do. So, and I know there should there needs to be an intervention. What is your short-term intervention to reduce? It's, it's a bit that you can see, and that's what I said. One, like I'm mentioning, we need to retain them. One, every of our primary school teachers, the plan is for each one of them to have a handheld tablet. When you have your tablet, you can indeed prepare your lesson. Note. It's mm. going to be generic. Mm. Everybody has an idea of what I'm meant to teach mm. next week. And it's the same standard everywhere, right? Once that is done, which is always the difficult things for them to do, they are happy going into those schools to, to teach. Secondly, at the secondary school levels, we're training them. Every day I sign, you know, requests from TESCOM, which is the Teaching you know, Service Commission, to train over 1,000 teachers almost on a monthly basis. We're training them. Thirdly, we are giving them, you know, encouragement. Mm -hmm. If you are the best teacher in money. a year, is the money. yes, is the money. Money. salary going well, up. Sir. Absolutely. Yes. Check, check it. We're the highest paying. That's Where they want fact. everything it's that it's, it's we are the highest paying That's in the country, mm. and we're giving them brand new cars. Mm. If you get to the height of it, you, and it's a, it's an organic system that throws you out. You are the best teacher. We're not giving one. We're not giving two. We're giving thirteen vehicles mm. in primary, in secondary schools. So okay. there, for three years consistently, so, I see my right. secondary school, primary school teachers having brand new schools. So, the exactly. ones that have won, you know, laurels at national level, right. we've given them even two-bedroom, three-bedroom houses. So that the idea is not, you know, to just throw prizes at people. It's to encourage others. Yeah. It's inspiring. to say that you will be identified yeah. and you'll be encouraged. Nice. Right? Okay. And so it's... It, 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 let, let me throw okay. if you want. Thank you. Our fans are greeting me on Twitter <laughs> and on Facebook. Thank you. Johnson says... 
Say what you want. Baba Jide Olushola Son Olu is competent. He knows his onions. And you can really catch him off guard. Mm. And um, Cold Funky says that uh, questions. I'm from River State. I always tell people I wish our governor was Jude Song Olu. Oh. And yeah. the only governor with brain cells and all of that. Okay, let me, I, I, let me take my own question. He has this one. He says he's not an APC supporter, but he's a trained enthusiast. He's voting you for second term if you can assure the completion of the blue and red lines. He says he's seen the work, but he wants to. Yeah. So, so maybe I should mention that yeah, for yeah, them. Thank you. So we've completed the phase one of the blue line. Right. Mm -hmm. And the news that I'm going to pass on is Mr. President himself will be coming later in the month to come and officially commission the blue line. Okay. So the blue line, the first one of it is from Mal 2, close to you, oh. to Marina, okay. right? There's, there's five stations on that corridor, and it's, we've finished it completed. You know, the new trains, we've seen one, additional trains are in the ports that they're going to be cleared this way, additional trains, yeah. and you see them before the end of the month, there, so we're ready. Okay, okay, it's okay. a rail that is running on electricity, which is for climate change, yeah, Miriam. Yeah. Take light we, will have, we have IPP, we have IPP, so it's going to be dedicated. Okay. Air condition, everything. And it's, it's, a, it's an intercity train, you know, meaning that it understands that we have load, we can carry load. Right. It's open, you can walk in, walk out oh, nice. very quickly. That's phase one. When President, we're starting the phase two again, and the phase two is from mile two all the way to Okokomaiko. The beauty of that one is, is in the middle as well. The right of way is there. Nima. <laughs> and it will be done quicker and faster right. because it's not elevated like the first one, which so it's at grid level. So we will we'll finish it up in, in no time. Right. That's for the blue line. Mm. The red line, for me, is even the one that my heart beats a lot for mm. because of the level of infrastructure that the red line will do. And we will complete it. By the way, we've got only about 147 days to May 29 this year, yeah. which is a thing that I signed with Lagosians. Right. We will finish it. In Call our me. first, oh yes, we will finish oh, okay. the red line. We'll the red that. line is from Oingbo all the way to, to Agbado. Agbado is actually in Ogun State. Mm. We extended it because we wanted to catch all of the traffic yeah. to make it Why viable. Why can't people near Agbado? Mm. No, 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 it's, it's, on, it's, it's the old, yeah. it's the old, it's Lagos West, it's Agege, yeah. Ikeja, yeah. Agege, yeah. you know, um, um, Ayola, Koka, Dokwemu. It's the old rail corridor. So we built our own with the federal government, you know, going Lagos, Ibadan, mm. right? Okay. So they will leave from, from, from Ibutemeta, go straight to Agege and get out of Lagos. Right. But we will start from Oimbo. We do, you know, Ibutemeta, we do Yaba, you know, we do um, um, Ilupeju, we do Mushin, right. we do Ikeja, we do Agege, we do Ayola Koka, we do Iju, then we do um, um, Okay, Agbadu. sir, let me it's throw a few more stretch. questions for you. It's a whole stretch. <laughs> Our governor is on ground, you know, exactly every corner. Yeah. But also, one of the things I admire about you is, you know, for a people where we build houses without fire exits and things like that, you put it into consideration. You rolled out about 62 fire yeah. trucks recently, right. you know, and all this infrastructure, whether we like it or not, there will always be health and safety concerns. Yeah. So concerning the trains now, the blue rail, what are the measures you've put in place? You've explained to us with the waterways, um, the emergency interventions. What would be that for the rail lines? For the rail lines. Yeah. Okay, so thank you. Inside the, rail, inside the trains themselves, they have CCTV cameras, right? We're not going to rush to start operations next week or next, you know, next, next two weeks. We're going to ensure that we can carry you free of charge. We'll invite your view one day. You go with other stakeholders. We we'll go on on a free ride right. to experience how you embark, how you disembark, right. how you use the turnstiles, how you use your card, and you're able to feel the entire terminal. It's an experience. Mm -hmm. You come into a, a station terminal, it's supposed to be an experience, you know, where you have cafes and, you know, and, 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 um, and viewing centers and all of it. So all of that will be installed with CCTV cameras. Mm -hmm. The track itself are going to be wall off, mm -hmm. right? So you don't have anybody on the track for whatever reason. So inside the terminal buildings, there will be CCTV. They're going to have their own local security. Inside the trains themselves, there will be security. Right. You know, and you need to show, have a turnstile to be able to go to the platforms. Mm -hmm. you know, the platform is where you are embarking, and it's elevated. All the platforms are elevated. You know, so you need to get in, get out, know how to in and ingress right. and outgress. Right. All of that we will do for a month or two, right. so that there's a lot of advocacy, you know, market for, women, right. children, you know, civil society groups, civil servants. People will come in and have an experience, yeah. okay. you know, free, oh, just nice. so that they get to understand it, have a feel it's of it easy. before, exactly, right. so that you're not just okay. coming to, and so people <laughs> will train you and let's, teach you. Let's talk about health, because I like to move into health. There's a lot of, 
want to stop I think, um, no, no, yeah, I want to uh -huh. stay there. Before we go into, it's, it's, it, it cuts across everything yeah. you're doing. We, we spend so much money on commissioning projects, sir. I've said it on the show before, yeah. that we cannot spend, we can't be putting budgets towards commissioning in an economy that is struggling. Yeah. And, and as rich as Lagos yeah. is, I know that we still need funds. Yeah. So um, I'm just, yeah. on behalf of all of us, I have yeah. complained behind yes. the scene, yes. that can we s reduce... Yeah. Commissioning. The commissionings that we do, like we know you're working, yeah. but we don't need to spend money doing elaborate okay. ribbon cutting processes. Yeah. So I'll give you a simple example. In one day, offline, we commissioned 15 brand new schools building, and I did not need to leave, right. you know, a venue mm. for me to go around and go and come. Mm. And it was the teachers and the pupils in those schools that did the commissioning themselves. Mm -hmm. And I was in one location, in one single location, just with a few of us there, and we commissioned 15 projects in one full suite. Like I mentioned to you, right, um, there are several things that have been, there are several roads that we never even got to commission that mm -hmm. people have started using, yeah. you, know, yeah. you know. So we well, went it's to the the other day, yeah. in we don't need to. People are beginning, right. once we, we just want well, like the citizens to, to understand and take over this asset and use it well. I'd like yeah. to see you come commission the co at least the completion of the Teddy Moro Road. That road has been overwarded. Over, over I lived there. Te Teddy Moro Road. You know, it's such an interesting road because mm. what had happened, and you know, I was telling you offline, is we've had a bridge failure there before. And, and truthfully, we needed to do it and do it well. right? So the bridge component is now being completed. It's the road infrastructure that we need to finish. Mm. You know? And okay. I can assure you me, it will be completed and it will be done. Okay. I'm doing for you Ishefun Afro Media. All the way to I'm not going that far. Anyway, because there are people <laughs> that are there. There are people that are there as well. So it's a whole gamut. Yeah. Let me go back to, go to some of your critics, because I, I tried to, yes. to like, all yeah. side. Your critics have said that one of the problems they have with the Lagos State is that if it costs 10 million naira to do something, Lagos yeah. State will say it's 100 million naira, okay. that they are chopping half the money. Okay. Everybody says, ah, it's not the real value. That yes, you are celebrating Link Bridge, you are celebrating okay. Third Milan, Fourth Milan Bridge, you are celebrating all these things. What cost but the real was the cost. Yeah. The real cost. Mora, you say, and and you are right, because a lot of people we need to educate people. Yes. Lagos is below the sea level in terms of you know the texture. And so the simple question you ask them is that how much does it cost to do a three-story building in Lagos and do a three-story building in Auchi, for example, or in Oyo State, for example? The amount of infrastructure that you put on the ground. No. The amount of deck on par that you put on our bridges, the amount of rigid pavement that we do on our road, it's, compared, it's not compared to almost any part of it. Because of the soil structure that we have. Mm -hmm. I just mentioned to you that Teddy Mo, the bridge first failed. It's because of the structure of the soil. No school that we're doing beyond two stories that we don't need to do pile. Mm -hmm. And you're not doing short piles, you are doing 14, we are doing 45 meters pile. Wow. You are doing 38 meters pile. So just that's to do the a cost. three story. That's where, what you put underneath. It's much more. It's much more. If you're doing your two-story building, um, Moya, if you want to, your, your contractor will tell you, you need to do German flow, you need to do um, some... Um, some <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's because of our structure. And that's what it is. For me to do a road, apart from sky fine, the level of compaction that you need to do, the amount of excavation that you need to do for it not to fail, right? It's, it's enormous. Yeah. If you look at the road from Osborne going towards Third Melambri, that whole stretch is a bridge. Mm. It's a bridge. It's deck compact. It's a bridge. Mm. So a lot of people don't know. And that's a, the flip side of climate change in Lagos. Mm. It's because of the tearing of where we found us. We're this in is the a very good line. explanation okay, because so I'm one of the critics sense. that is always shouting that. So you see it in your, in, your, in your estate yeah. development. Yeah, I see know, the amount of, yeah. amount of money they will say if you want to do three stories. internship now, so she Exactly. Will. I have another question. We'll take the questions of okay. online after our break because I wanted to finish up with the core yeah. questions for you. Let's go to the health. I have another theme on health. I want yeah. to talk on health, but on that yeah. thing, your critics here, I'll talk to you. There's so many. Let me go to health. Health. Go to so, uh, Nima and I, we use General <laughs> Hospital. Good. Right. Fantastic. Nima, uh, because we, yes, because we gave birth. Yes. We gave birth in a General Hospital. Yes. You cannot Thank take you. it from me. Yeah. Absolutely. And for me, I used it. <laughs> yes. so, so, I stayed in a General Hospital yeah. for six months. Absolutely. Hey, hey. So, you cannot, we cannot take our experience. Okay, but well, to the point. Um, it is still, and I understand that the facility is being overworked, but I feel that um, I want to find out from you. Yes. What would you highlight as your key health achievements in the past four years? What are the improvements that you are most proud of in the health sector? And what would you do to make it even better for those that use the public health system? Okay. So, so without sounding like a broken record, one of, in my view, one of our strongest success in health in three and a half years was the fact that I, I kept all of you during COVID alive. 
Mm. And you see, we, we tend to That's forget. True. Yeah, we do. We tend to forget where we're coming from. If indeed Lagos carried 50% of the total burden of this country, and as a government, we're able to proactively put in place structures that kept us all safe throughout that period. We had four levels of, of spikes, you know, and, and what the whole world said was going to happen to us didn't happen, mm -hmm. right? A bit of credit needed to come there. And yeah. it slowed us down right. in some other areas, right? But that's, that's it. And we're able to continue to lead the country throughout that space, you know? So that is something that I need to give, not credit to me, but the entire health you know, family that I have, all of the frontline health workers, the doctors, the nurses, the interventionists, all of them mm -hmm. raised up. Mm -hmm. At the time, some of them were living, you know, in rented hotels for a week, for two weeks. They were not going home mm -hmm. because we didn't want them to even infest their family. They were all... So that, that for us, it's a, it's a, it's a pandemic, is it's a generational mm -hmm. solution mm -hmm. that nobody can take away from us. Yeah. That's one. Secondly, in terms of specifics, infrastructure is important, right? We built... Three ad four additional hospitals, right? In Etiosa, 110 bed. In Badagri, 110 bed. In Ekwe, 110 bed. In Alimosha, 110 bed. I mean, real talk that we've commissioned, handed over brand new I hospitals. Have the no, I'm, I'm coming, man. I'm That's coming, man. You know, so these are things that you know we have new ones that we're building, and we're taking it to another level. We're building the biggest children's hospital in the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa. The new mass situation on Temple. We're building so you know, national we're doing almost national opposite you <laughs> at Ojo. I'm building a brand new general hospital for you by Ojo Cantonment. It's about 60, 50. Is, I thought it was a is that, that's the criticism. Oh, that's a criticism. I wanted yeah. to criticize you because exactly. you opened another primary health care center no. in Amu. I am and I was like, a general where hospital. Is Ojo, people? Ojo, right what opposite are we going to by do? The, whether it's Ojo is close. It's, there, it's better the, than going over to Alimosh. Absolutely. By the yeah. Ami Cantonment. That's your Ojo General Hospital. So that place. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you, sir. So we're doing that. I wish I had not said. I want to criticize you. Let us let us go back for a second. So in terms of also other soft yeah. You know, look at it. Well, We're the only doctors. ones that have kept our doctors all the while when, when resident doctors were on strike. Not one day were we on strike. Mm. It's because we're able to sit with them and solve. I have, you know, the best, you know, residency um, 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 care center in Lassut now. I have, I, have, I, have, I have rooms for, for, for not just, I mean, for house officers, for, for residents. We're building doctor's quarters in Bagada. Uh. We're building doctor's quarters in Lassut. We're, we're ensuring that they can indeed feel good coming to work for health. It's one of the only places that I have what we call an automatic replacement. If a doctor leaves, they don't need my approval to replace that doctor automatically. Mm -hmm. Automatically. We're the highest employer in the medical field in the entire country. Lawsuit today is the best tertiary health facility that we have in the country. And so for critical care, we're not joking about it. These are very expensive things. That we, need to, that we need to continue to keep up with. But we know that the solution some people will say is that it should be one health you know, coverage. What are we doing with primary health? So that people don't need to go to last week. We've built additional, we have a design for our primary health. We've built additional 15 that we're building. You know, on, on it's one thing to build school. size, another thing to equip, so, it's another thing to have the I'm, right... Yes, go ahead, so, you want to add to that? So I want, yes, I want to add to that. Yeah. So I hear what yeah. you say, and maybe infrastructure, we can see that. Yeah. But regular Lagosians will tell you you're going to the hospital. And there's so many issues that you're dealing with. Yeah. I mean, you're the highest employer of doctors, but you're also the highest jackpot doctors coming, you know, from... Not necessarily. Go do the numbers. <laughs> okay. From no, go, do, go do the so numbers. My own is, we don't have that attrition need, like other parts yes, of the country. We don't. I think we need a system yeah. that sort of um, checkmates yeah. or check what these um, hospitals are doing. When like, Lagosians go into hospitals, are they get, getting the care that they are supposed to get? Are they getting the drugs? Is there, are there beds? Is there proper care for patients? Because you, have, so because you would have Lagosians tell you some really so, sad experiences. So, so Lagosians will say, people will say, but well, let's, let's the fact also speak for itself, mm -hmm. right? We're in, we're in a, a system where we don't have foolproof, you know, um, 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 citizens' data, where we can say for ourselves, who are many people come from a born state or come uh, from different part of the country uh, okay. to come and receive health care here. Mm. I know the numbers because when you go to Lassut in the morning, at 6.30 in the morning, the whole place is filled up. Crowd. And when you go find out, hmm. when you go find out, you realize that a lot of them came by overnight bus mm. into Lagos mm. just so that they can receive that care. And attest. 
Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. That's what you see. Mm -hmm. Miriam, so what we know mm -hmm. is that if we can manage that influx, then we can do a lot better job, especially if it is predictable. <laughs> but in all of our general hospitals now, if you are on our care list, mm -hmm. we are expecting you, we know how to better prepare for you. The number speaks for itself. Right. I've got right. over 30 general hospitals. Nobody has any number close to that. No. Nobody. Right. And like I said to you, our doctors, I'm still the only one paying full employment for resident doctors, 100% of, of, mm. of their examination fees, right. year on year. All right, yeah, let, me, yeah. let me go on a break. When we come back, we'll open our phone lines to hear from Lagosians and take some messages on our Twitter. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're going to open our phone lines. You can call us on 081-270-5367-091-390-76948. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. All right. So I wanted to talk about another um, things your critics always say. Uh, because they see that you are a huge supporter of Ashura Jubal and um, coming into the office. And um, they talk about this blueprint that Lagos State. Ah, blueprints. They do from Ashola, from this person. They went this. I said, where is this blueprint, Murayu? Have you your own eyes seen the blueprint? He said, document. does it must be a document? Or, it's not just an ideal, an ideology yeah. that's being passed from people. But could you tell us why do people give Ashwaju credit for a lot of things we see in Lagos? Is there a real connection? Okay. Oh, they said Lagos already existed before he was governor. So why is he being given credit for building Lagos? Mm. Thank you very much. And I see this are you know, instructive learning point that we need to put forward. So I joined him with all sense of humility 20 years ago. I was a general manager in my bank with a corner office, November 2020, sorry, 2002, mm. precisely, so about 20 years ago. I was a, so, so, I mean, and we had criticized government three, four years, mm -hmm. two, three years before then. And I had a real opportunity. I appointed a special. So from very first day, I was in his cabinet when I joined in 2002. And I saw things firsthand, you know, for me even before the end of his first tenure. Mm. So I'm, I'm a living witness. And it's not anything that we're blabbing about. It's something that we know. So what happened at that time, right? We set up documents called the La Seed, the Seed document, so which are Lagos State Economic Development documents. Mm. We also have what we call a 10-point agenda, right? It's like what I call a team's mm. agenda yeah. now. 10-point agenda had, you know, Revenue generation, transportation, public this, public that. You know, all of that were en encapsulated in the last seeds and in the seed of which are economic documents. Well, we set up and started the Embetty, you know, year on year economic summit, where you take inputs from the private sector, put it into your own flesh of document and it becomes a working paper that you can live with moving forward, right? So in that, it's is, is only seven years, sorry, eight years as, as government, as, 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 as governor. I worked with him closely for at least five years, you know, one year before the end of his first tenure and the entire four years of his second tenure. So I was, I was commissioner for economic planning. So I, I was part of all of mm. those documents that were developed. Lamata, for example, that we talked about, it's not out of place. We had that robust, he set up Lamata with the World Bank. You know, in 2002, 2000, I was one of the people that first recruited the first set of people that worked in Lamata. It was a World Bank, one of the best World Bank, you know, transport mm. infrastructure, mm. you know, um, 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 agencies that, that anybody can see in the world. So those are, you know, and it was the beginning of democracy, 1999. Mm. You know, coming from a military rule where it's not a government of inclusiveness. Now starting up in 1999 with a government that have the opportunity to include the citizens, listen to them, have an engagement. You know, it was more like an, an all-inclusive right. rule. So that was how that blueprint was developed. And they had like a 20 year development plan, right. which of course BRF also improved upon, took away some, add on to it, and but they, similar thing, ourselves, that's, that's really what it means. Right. And because there's also been continuity in all of these things, you know, we were able to see what the challenges of the previous government is, mm. what are the things you need to take on right. and use very quickly, 
and have you know a springboard movement right. into your own government. So that's one of the things that have helped us. And so we, we give him that credit because he was the one that was able to bake the first you know retinue of, right. of, of very okay. intelligent you know people that, Let me that take have worked. this call. Um, Yakub, are you there? Thanks for calling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank Our first caller of the year. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, thanks to you. Uh, because of, of the time. Good morning, Mr. Governor. Good morning, Yakub. Uh, you see, Morayo, I, I, I totally agree with uh, Mr. Governor this morning. Uh, why? Because uh, Lagos is working fully. Because I can say that he, in my area here, uh, as I'm talking to you, in a, a lot of street is under construction and like almost 10 at a time. I've never seen that yes. before. But I also okay. have a controversial okay. question, and then I wouldn't like Mr. Governor to bend that answer. You should go straight to that answer and give it to us, so that you know. The question is this, sir. If you are moving in Lagos State as a commercial board, you will see all these... Uh, uh, are you listening to me? Yes. yes. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. This NURCW, we want to know all this money they were collected from the commercial board because it takes a lot of money. Where this money is going to, where are they remit the money to? Are they remit this money to Lagos State Government Board or they are spending the money to National Board? We want to know because they collect a lot of money. We don't want to see it for anything. Okay, that's a, that's a fair question. Let me let you answer. Go well, ahead. I mean, so, so you're right. You know, there, there are issues that we need to resolve you know, with, you know, um, the transportation sector. And you see, we started. We, at some point, we actually prescribed there, right? And that's why we set up, you know, the parking authorities so that, indeed, we can sit with them and on and And we're beginning to get a lot more mileage than what it was six, eight months ago, right? We're not fully out of it yet because it's a system that has been in existence for decades. So you're not going to one day just sleep and wake up and it's, it's all changing. They sit with us now. And Odumosu, who was a former, you know, CP, right, heads that, that, that parking authority, right, with the former um, permanent secretary in Ministry of Tourism, you know. And so these are very seasoned civil servants that are sitting with them and ensuring that these are the rules of engagement in which you need to, to get cleared of. And they will tell us, okay, give us one week, give us one month for us to change all of these things. So these are citizens that we also need to understand that they are stakeholders in some sort, right, but we need to be able to bring bear right, some level of civility, okay. some level of, you know, organization in the things that they do. And we're getting around it and, we're, and it's getting improved. Okay. You know, part of the things that we see is also the level of, of, of recklessness that also happens with our national board. A lot of the money are actually shipped to Abuja okay. and their national body, which is honestly, which is the truth. The money. And the so money staying home. Ex well, it's, and we're saying to them, what are you also using these interventions for? What, how are you retraining mm. your drivers, your conductors? Okay for them to be best behaved, right? Mm -hmm. How are you going to refleet your vehicles? Exactly. Ensure that these vehicles are not, not rickety, down. they're not run down, they're not yeah. chain people's, you don't go on a bus and you come out, you know, with one leg, you know, cut off and the rest of it. So these are the conversations. And we're helping them Are they to the be same able to drivers refleet. with the last smile? Are they going to be the same drivers driving these, our new buses? No, new well, not, they're, they're not. But we also include them. We also give them some fleet so that you need to include them in something. So mm -hmm. there are other transport companies that are private transport companies, okay. right, that are actually the ones, you know, running, running this. Okay, let me market. take Yakub, or no, not Yakub, uh, Miss uh, Hassan from Lekki. Mm. Hassan, you're live. Go ahead, please. Mm. Yes. Good morning and happy new year. Happy new year, happy sir. Happy new year. To the executive members and the executive governor of Lekki. <laughs> yes, sir. Let me congratulate you first, Babajide Samoru. Thank you. For taking the bull by the horn, by fighting two major works in the ground team. Enter and come. Congratulations for your performance. Thank you. Secondly, Mr. Governor, we saw the infrastructure, infrastructure that is going on in the other state. Under your leadership, your predecessor, and the first predecessor, Mr. Al Hati, Bola Abe Tinubu, your mentor, the mentor of Nigeria. A progressive government, a leader, a father, and a communicator. As I said, we have a question. We don't have time more. Look at this. Here is this. Mr. Governor, please. You have some other small things to do for us. Yeah. You yeah. think yeah. it's in our room, in Lekki area, yeah. need to be looked into. Okay. Come to Money Road, come 
Okay. So I have. Okay, so we got the point. So I go yeah, beyond want, the inner route. Yeah. 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 Not just lucky across to the state. Mm -hmm. no. How, what are we doing? The inner route generally. Yeah. So as we speak, we're working with the local government first. We're doing 114 inner routes. With the 57 local government, we said to them, let's take two, 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 right? And let's help you jointly to fix them. Mm. That's one. The Public Works Bureau, because they just, Lagos has over 10,000, you know, routes in one form or the other. You know, they, they, Public Works Bureau at any point in time have about 200 routes that they are trying to fix or, or you know, patch. The lucky, the, the challenge there is also the level of use you know, and the amount of, you know, um, mm. development that is happening there. And so yeah. one of the things that we plead with people, when you fix those routes and there's another construction coming, you know, by the time they bring all of the trucks and the rest of it yeah. and they are piling, you know, granites and all of the things onto the drainages, it gets blocked. These are some of the challenges that we have to be able to do because they are not completely built up yeah. yet. So each time when you go back there, you see, I mean, a, a say, yeah, they are corporate, <laughs> you know. So you see that they will have tilted, you know, all of their gravel and sand, blocked the drainage, and you have to come and excavate and clean them up again. Fine Those then. are some of it. And they, 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 you know, they destroy some of the, some of the okay, drainage. We have to run out of time. Government. Let me, yeah. let me let Marion jump, jump in. Let Marion jump in and they'll come I just want to talk about the personality of Mr. Governor. Oh. So I know a lot of times we talk about projects and what you do for many, um, you know, top personalities. I remember when you first came in, yeah. when you said that you would, you would rather, you prefer to be referred to as Mr. Governor. Governor. Yeah. And also many times people will talk about the fact that you're, you're being controlled by someone or, you know, and here we are talking to you. And if you see the messages also on social media, you know, the, 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 the response is, this is a man who's on ground, who knows what he's doing. So I would like to know what motivates you? Who, why do you do what you do and why do you do it so well? Is it because you have to answer to someone or what is it that motivates you personally to do the work you're doing in Lagos State? You know, it's, it's, it's a position of humility. It's a position in which you need to be grateful to God, right? Um, given my very humble background, right? When you have the unique, rare opportunity to serve over 20 million, you know, citizens, the biggest, you know, African city in the world, a city that, that is projected, you know, to be the, the rising sign you know, of, of, modern, of modern Africa. Um, I think you wake up every day thankful to God with the opportunity, asking God to give you every energy that you require to be able to serve them, right? And so for me, it's really around understanding what the social contract with my citizens are. Let me tell you, today we have 147 days to the end of our first tenure. I've done almost 90% of my time. I count it every day. Every day I review and I ask myself, how well have I done? Mm. So for me, it's a measurement that I give myself every day. Mm. Out of 1,460 days, we've done about 1,300 know, and, yeah. and something. We've got about 147, 147. Yep. So with that level of measurement, I'm not waiting you know, to the end of it to say, what did I do? So I understand that you have a responsibility to your citizens. Right. You have a zeal, a will, a commitment integrity right. to put on the table. And that's what, what okay. gives me, you know, I, I, I'll give you a simple example. There's some telephones that I see in the morning, I get scared to pick. Why? Because the guys on the other side are not calling to tell me good, good morning. They're telling to tell me that a container just fell off. Yeah. Yeah. They're coming to tell me that there's a fire incident yeah. mm -hmm. and I need to get up, I need to give instructions, I need to be encourage them, I need to give them a clear instruction of how we need to clear and deal with that issue. Yeah. And these are some of the things that continue to keep you going. You know. Let me get a few comments from so, Tom. Um, Billy is talking about the Lagos Abekuta yeah. road. Yeah. So I decided I'm selfish for focusing yeah. on my side. Yes. They want to know why the road from Mero to Amadia inwards um, uh, Abekuta is not finished. Says it's in a bad state. Said that they also an aband abandoned the pedestrian bridge at Kolabo stop in Alagbado. Uh, what are you okay? Well, it's, it's very specific. I probably won't know where Kuala bus stop is <laughs> in Alagbado, but I'll tell you two weeks ago, we still went to commission you know two critical roads in Alimosho to the border of Ogun State the Ishefun, Ish, Ishefun Camp mm -hmm. David mm -hmm. Road. No, this is a 7.8 kilometer road, major artery, dual carriageway, mm. Ishuti Road, 3.7 kilometer, dual carriageway up until the border of Ogun State. Mm. These are major inner roads. And I was still there two weeks ago, mm. right? In 
the first two years, we commissioned 31 roads at, at um, 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 Ujo, um, Ujokoro, mm -hmm. which is also a border town. Those are... With... with, with uh, Lagos Abekuta uh, Road is a street. So, where, Lagos Abekuta Road... All our services are along that Exactly. Street. Lagos Abekuta is a federal road. Federal road. This is a road <laughs> in which, you know, the Honorable Minister for, for, for Works, mm -hmm. believe me, you, has done a lot of interventions right. for us in Lagos. Mm -hmm. And they're taking that, yet. and mm -hmm. I believe that there is part of the things that, they, that they're trying to fix. You know, it sits more in Ogun State than in our own bits. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And I've been there. I know it. I, I see it. Let me take this call because I have to. Thank I have you. very little time left. Mr. Deyemi from Ijushaga really wants to talk to you. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Are you there? <laughs> so many people. Hello, good morning. You're live. You go ahead, Adeyemi. Yes, I, I, I want to thank um, Mr. Mr. Governor for all that he's doing. I follow him closely on Instagram, and I see all the updates about the project. You know, he keeps updating us about things, the project done in, in Lagos State, the milestones and everything. I am really proud of Governor Songo Songo Thank you so much for Thank all you, you do. Ah. And that, secondly, too, because um, in areas like a fair are opening up, you know, the roads are being built, it has given us middle and low income earners the ability to invest in real estate. Mm. Thank you so much, Mr. Oh. Governor, oh, that I can you. take my. my, my Oh, Thank you very much, Adeyemi. We have, we have very little time, and, and I'm not taking any comments or social media. Omolaja Olatunji says, I'm highly impressed by Mr. Governor's oh. articulate responses to questions and policy issues. He's far more composed and has a firm grip of everything happening around him. Truly, I'm happy and would campaign for his re-election. Well done, sir. So Let me, many I, you see, you can't come on your view, <laughs> and I don't ask you about family, because that's mm -hmm. what our show is about. Yes, we do politics, governance, but... Yes. I have to ask about your wife. I mean, I've had an opportunity to Maybe speak to her. She's being quiet, reserved. She hardly speaks. You know, like first name is not in charge. She's hard acting. working. She's a professional. She's she dots her eyes and cross her T's. I mean, <laughs> you can't take anything past her. Say so she will bring your file. She will look at it. <laughs> but tell us about your wife. We don't. You, you, well, what, 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 what's well, uh, Thank you. Well, that's that's one part mm -hmm. that I mean. It's always been very well. We're in public, so we cannot be public, yeah. right? I mean, I'm I'm grateful to her. Right, she's a, a woman that um, um, has sort of like complemented the role mm. that, that, that God has given us now, very, very, with all sort of dignity, right. right? Like you said, she's a medical doctor herself. She loves kids a lot. I wish she would have seven kids. <laughs> I mean, you know. How many I'm, do you I'm, have? You know, I'm, I'm a father of the state. I have children that call me their dad. Yeah. <laughs> so if I go all and say there's only Three you or get four, in trouble. I'll get in trouble okay, with them, okay, you know. Okay. So let all of them feel that I'm still their dad, even outside of government, you know. <laughs> so, um, and, but, but, you know, for her, it's really about putting everything she has also learned mm -hmm. as a lady, you know, to put it to work, right? And, and I see the complementary role that she brings on board. She gives you your space to work, but mm -hmm. she, like you said, she's very detailed. She's mm -hmm. extremely, extremely very detailed, and she's someone that you need to take very seriously. You know, um, she's not the person with um, a lot of, you know, airs around. And I think it just speaks to, you know, the humbleness, you know, of what our family values are. Mm. And we're indeed just very, very grateful, you know, for a time like this that we're, we're here to, to, serve, to serve the state. Right. So I, I, I want to thank her, you know, publicly for the, for the support. Yeah. You know, for our time, and I wish her on all the very, very best as well. Oh, right. okay. So, so we have to go ahead. Talk, I, have, I have to wrap up, but yes. I have two questions for you. Um, <laughs> Which is go ahead, talk. Yeah. Where you. Uh, go ahead, talk. Let me just because I thought you didn't have a question. <laughs> I go do. Ahead, I do. Um, and I'll, I'll like you to address because we've had. Maria said we have some people saying things, yeah. and it would be wrong for us not to, to let you clear yeah. air on that. Um, there are several times people have made it look like you are, you are, you you are implementing. These decisions that you're not the one making those decisions. They make it look like, oh, because you have this very calm man and you're always People listening. Instructing a puppet. Yeah, that somebody is instructing you, you're doing what they want, um, that um, Ashiwaji is running Lagos. You know, that's, we've heard that so, over so, and over So I again. can answer very simply, you know. You know, one of the strongest points of a leader, right, is people to underrate you. Mm. It's people to think, can I you know. That? Right, I mean, that's, <laughs> and, and you don't have to be in people's face to get it done. All you have to do is roll off your sleeves and get the job work. done. And check it. Integrity is what I live with. As a treasurer in a bank, my word is my bond. I give mm. commitments and I keep to those commitments. I say I'll finish something in December. I will do everything to ensure that I finish it in December. You know, by the way, Ashwaja has moved on to Abuja for the past six years. Mm. 
for the past six years. Mm. He lived 85% of his time in Abuja. I've not spoken to him in a week. Mm. In a week. But it's a father is, is a man that I respect personally. And I cannot take it away. Mm. You know, so, you know, so people will look for things. But are we keeping our eyes on the ball? Yes. Are we doing the things Lagosians want us to do? Yes. So do you have such a relationship with Derek? Absolutely. Absolutely. I still spoke with him three, four days ago. Mm -hmm. He's my leader, he's my boss. He's a three lady boy like myself. <laughs> we knew ourselves way, well, way, way back. What, what are actually just chances, especially in Lagos State? Lagos State, some, some would say, is somewhat fragmented. Like, there are people from different places who are um, leading certain parties and other parties. People would think, I mean, in the past, we say, oh, it's an APC state. But now, people cannot confidently say, ah, are you sure Lagos State is still an APC state? No, so we are confident. Do you have... It's an APC state. Okay. And you can okay. see the APC government doing everything. What, what are these it. no, that It's absolutely this. very bright, okay. extremely very bright. But we'll not leave everything to chance. We will continue to engage mm. people. We will not say that you know we're about one side of, of, of divide. It's it's inclusive mm. to ensure that he gives in his very best right to every Nigerian that that that, that is possible for him to you know to reach I'm out. So sorry, we'll get to the question about portable water over and over again. Mm. It's so a major so what, challenge. Are, what is the challenge? Mm. And and I'll be here to be honest with you. It's true. It's a challenge. And it's because we need to go raise funding that is required to fix it. And it's a lot of money. We're talking about 100 billion, 150 billion. So what are we doing? We have a major water works, you know, in Iju and Adion, mm. right? We're building from what we have now, currently 70 million meg, um, um, gallons per day, which is running at less than 50%. Mm. Because these are built in, this, in, 1940s, in 1970s, 1974, 75. But we are currently building a 50 million gallon additional infrastructure that is slowing us down. So once we can do the real big ones is, is to do, you know, what we call um, 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 the transmission, mm. you know, which, which, which we need to, to be the next level of funding that we need to have. You know, it's like power. Once you do generation of, of water, yeah. mm. you need to be able to transmit it, you know, which, it which has to get to all of the nukes right. and crannies of it. So we, we're just going to be able to so, raise crazy finance. But I want to appeal to my citizens and say to them that, you know, relief for water is coming. You know, water people see it as part of the social service. It's gone beyond that. You know, the funding of water is some very creative means, and it's not cheap. It's all, almost as equally as expensive as power itself. Right. But we understand and appreciate that we're in a city in which we need to yeah. be able to give our people, you know, okay. I mean, portable drinking water. Finally, you're going to the polls next month. Going to be running the second term. Mm -hmm. Is it next like, month? It's next month. Why January? No, it's mine. Yeah, is March. March. Oh, yeah, it's March. March. But I'm involved in February. Yeah, in February. So, it's, so it's, the point it's, it's, is, yes. I'd like you to final word to Lagosians. Why should they vote you in well, again? Why do you think you are the leader for Lagos? Well, thank you very much, ladies, and thank you very much for having me. You know, so it's really not about me alone. It's about all of us. It's about what we believe, what our future should look like. It's about what kind of legacy should we be living, you know, behind? And I want to say that in the last, you know, three and a half, three years and about seven months, it's been, an, it's been a unique opportunity experience for me. Like I said, I've done about 89% of my time, right? But the beauty of it is that we've kept faith with all of the things, you know, that we said we're going to do under the team's agenda. We didn't have time to talk about tourism, about security, you know, about housing, what we've done over 17 projects, you know, about all of the roads that we've done. We will not say that we've scored everything, but we will say to you that with all sense of responsibility, you know, we've earned our bill. We've, we've dealt with, year on year, we keep making 80, 85% of our budget performance. Mm. We've tripled, we've doubled our budget size mm. in three years, even in a COVID rundown environment. We're doing roads in almost every part of the city concurrently. Mm. Yes. Concurrently, we're building these things, you know, concurrently. And so we have so much energy to still give on. Mm. And so what we're happy, uh, asking for is, you see, don't let there be distractions. You know, mm. yes, it's politics. Yeah. So people will say that, you know, eh, he's this, he's that, he collects this and all of that. And people will show you pictures that are 10, 15 years old. It's all politics. You know, but I want to say to all of them, let's join hands. See a train that is moving. Join the train. And because we'll have an opportunity to do this right. quicker, okay, better, train. and right. faster for another four years. Fantastic. And the know it well. You Thank you so sure. much. So well. <laughs> <laughs> they asked you we can take. to call Mr. Governor back, and they said two they hours won't cut it. Oh, please. absolutely. So we, we, we <laughs> hope to bring him because it took three and a half years to bring him. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 to but I will see if hopefully when we'll try to bring you back again very soon, hopefully to get more from But thank you so much, sir. Thank you. It was a pleasure having you on our show today. That's all we can take on today's show. We'll be speaking with the governor, one of our favorite governors.
Yeah, number one, and we I think it is number two. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, list. from my own list. My <laughs> but um, it was fantastic having our governor on the show today. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much for a fantastic day. And happy new year to our viewers again. Thank we'll you. see you tomorrow. Bye for now. What a way to start the year. Thank you.